Hello, uh, it's Claudia from Silent Love Blog. Um, I'm doing uh, an audio blog just for a bit of a change and had to have a think about how I was going to do it. I'm not really one for being featured on videos. So what I've done, and I hope you don't mind, is I've just given you a little taster for the memory corner that I currently have set for Vincenzo, um, Benedetto, my twins, and um, Gabriele. It is uh, three weeks and a day today since we lost Gab and it's been nine months, three weeks and three days since I lost my twin boys Vincenzo and Benedetto. Um, all of them were stillborn and having to decide which entry on my blog I was going to read, I thought that it would be pertinent to read the most recent entry that I made, um, which is from Saturday the 29th of October. The title is When Two Absolutely Needs to Become Three. I have got to stop talking to you as if you were still in my belly, Gab. I mean, I chat to the twins all the time, but saying when Papa arrives home from work, I visto Papa è tornato, look, Papa's back in Italian, is nothing but a ticket to a mental, mental institution. It was more than a habit, though, chatting to you. You were my future, and now that's all on standby. This is why I'm finding it such a hard habit to break. I was chatting to a friend online just the other day. I was trying to remember when the two of us, my husband and I, stopped being enough. I clearly remember a time when I didn't discuss my day-to-day -day life with photos, chat to an empty belly, not stop the cupboards with obscure brands of vitamins which all boast magical powers, weep at watching the 4400 box set and then actually wish there was a healer I could call to mend my broken placentas. I do remember when it was just him and I. He was everything to me everything I ever wished for. We laughed. Babies? Pa! Who needs babies? Now, don't get me wrong, he is absolutely still my one and only, but that stopped being enough. And now, I'm kind of regretful it did, because this year has turned out to be very, very not what we wanted. Something switched on, and now it's stuck in my head, like a song you can't get rid of. I have to have a baby, and every time I'm denied, I become more resilient. I have to do this, but nothing to do with selfishness. Not out of selfishness, but out of love. Not for the fact that I fail, but for the very fact that I almost win. Each time, I almost get there. I almost get to hold them. It becomes obsessive. It is obsessive. An all-consuming game where you're playing against yourself, trying to find the answer, without having the foggiest idea what the rules are. This is not helped by the game not being played anything like the one you remembered playing with your dolls as a child. Do you remember? Your tummy got big, aided by an uncomfortable plastic limb doll being stuffed up your jumper. You went to hospital, bottom bunk bed. You came home with the plastic baby that used to cry when you pulled its dummy out of its mouth until the batteries ran out and then broke when you made it drink water. It's hard not to become fanatical. Immediately running to Hobbycraft to buy those dyed pink feathers that you read somewhere would sustain a pregnancy if you wore them strapped round your waist while running down the street naked. You become a believer in all kinds of unbelievable. The stuff I used to pull my no way face at. I believe now in all that stuff. Any kind of stuff just stuff. Give me the stuff. I need to make him happy. I have to make him smile again. Because it isn't fair that I found my soulmate to only make him the saddest man in the world. The funeral is on Wednesday. The second one this year. I say it again. I cannot wait for this year to conclude. 